Exactly 50 years ago, in 1924, Professor Satyan Bose, at the age of 30, made an original contribution to theoretical physics. His work assisted and even inspired many brilliant scientists of that time. So, in January 1974, at Calcutta, the 50th anniversary of the Bose statistics is celebrated. What transfers and distinguished Many scientists from far and near assembled to pay tribute to the great thinker. Sri Subramanian inaugurates the seminar and dwells on the far-reaching effects of his work published 50 years ago. He says, It is indeed a pleasure and privilege for me to associate myself with the seminar. 1974, which marks the 50th anniversary of those statistics, is a year of special importance to Indian science. <laughs> Professor Bose acknowledges tributes from his compatriots. Gentlemen, I am deeply grateful to our president for having permitted me to speak today. I feel very grateful and at the same time overwhelmed at this great honor that you have done me. But after all, if one has lived through so many years of struggle, if at the end he finds that he is what I can appreciate it, it means that he doesn't need to live long. I suppose this is a peaceful end to a long day. Thank you. Calcutta of the 90s. In this house, Shaktyan was born on the 1st of January 1894. He was the first child of Surendranath Bose and Amudini Devi. Shaktyan, even in his early years at the Hindu school, showed an original mind. The mathematics teacher awarded Shaktyan 110 marks out of the maximum of 100 because all questions set, including alternatives, had been answered correctly, each in a novel way. The teacher was filled with admiration at Shaktyan's originality and prophesied that Shaktyan would one day be as great a mathematician as Laplace and Pythagoras. From school, across the road to the Presidency College. Through this corridor of learning, Shaktyan climbed from the year 1909 onwards to higher studies. Among his teachers, there was the great scientist Jagadish Chandra Bose for physics. No better teacher could have been found to mold Shaktyan's youthful and plastic mind. It calls for no great imagination for us to presume that this teacher had reminded his students time and again not to take anything for granted but to be guided by their own reason and observation. It was a unique coincidence that a group of brilliant students at the Presidency College came under the care of the great Jagadish Chandra Bose. Shatyan's academic career was exceptionally brilliant and finally in his chosen subject, mixed mathematics, he stood first in 1915 and created a record which has not been equaled. In 1917, Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee, the famous educationist, appointed Shaktyan a lecturer in the newly founded College of Science of the Calcutta University. But the thirst for knowledge urged Shaktyan to seek complete information of contemporary scientific thought. With his colleague and friendly rival, Meghnath Shah, 
Chatender Nath took to translating Einstein's general theory of relativity from the German. This was the first English translation of Einstein's work. In 1921, Shatyan Bose left Calcutta for the Dhaka University as a reader in physics. The congenial atmosphere, free from constraints, aided the young scientist to carry on his work on fundamental research. Three years later, in 1924, Bose, just a reader, sent his first major contribution to Einstein on Planck's law and light quanta hypothesis. Einstein regarded Bose's paper as a significant step forward in the field of theoretical physics. Einstein appreciated the originality of young Bose's derivation, and he forthwith translated the paper and saw that it was published in the foremost scientific journal of Germany. Thus, Bose joined the scientific thinkers of his day. For his original contribution to fundamental physics, Bose was granted study leave for two years by the Dhaka University. For investigating new developments that were taking place in Europe, particularly in applied sciences. In October 1924, Bose arrived in Paris. From where he writes to Einstein to know the master's opinion of a second paper entitled Thermal Equilibrium in Radiation Field in Presence of Matter. Einstein again translated Bose's second paper and published it in the same journal, but this time with a note of dissent, which Bose did not wholly accept. Bose hoped that future scientists would find some meaning in his point of view. While still in Paris, Bose realized the importance of applied sciences. He had the privilege of working in Madame Curie's laboratory, also in the X-ray laboratory of Maurice de Boilly. Yet, Bose yearned to meet the great scientist of the day. He traveled to Berlin, and Einstein received him cordially, introducing Bose to the famous members of the Academy of Sciences. All were engaged in the pursuit of knowledge. Planck, Schrödinger, Pauli, Heisenberg, Max Born, and many others. Bose returned from Europe in 1926 as a professor of physics at the Dhaka University. He saw the need of the future, and so he devoted his time to providing new avenues of research and also to teaching the younger generations. For nearly 24 years, Professor Bose taught and guided his beloved students in the Dhaka University and during his lifetime became a legend. In 1945, back to Calcutta University, his alma mater, as Khaira Professor of Physics, Professor Bose formed a group of students of different branches of physics. He initiated research on thermoluminescence and designed an original type of spectrophotometer. Equally competent as a theoretician and an experimentalist, Professor Bose would take nothing for granted in regard to laboratory procedures. Make your own instruments, the professor told his students. 
never mind if suitable instruments can be got from abroad. By designing and making your own, you have a clear idea of the problems. Internationally well known, the professor was often invited to conferences abroad. In 1954, in the Crystallographic Conference in Paris, he presented a paper on the details of the spectrophotometer designed by him. During the last years of his life, Einstein was taken up with the problem of a unified field theory which would furnish all the answers to the problems of the physical world. Einstein's unified field theory owes to Professor Gross much towards its development. During 1952-53, Professor Gross devoted his time with characteristic vigor to solve the 64 equations of Einstein's unified field theory, which provides the guideline to future scientists working on the problem. The years of work were occupied by Professor Gross on diverse problems. His papers were published from 1917 to 1955 in important scientific journals of the world. Honors and recognition came as they come to the great. Professor Gross was the general president of the Indian Science Congress in 1944. Honorary member, National Institute of Science, Padma Vibhushan. Doctorates conferred by various universities in India. And at last, in 1958, Professor Bose was honored by the Royal Society of England with a fellowship. The professor never yearned for formal recognition. He believed that awards were not the end. Many a time he impressed on all his students to comprehend the problems of their subjects rather than to strive for doctorates. The vice chancellorship of Vishwabharati was indeed a fitting honor to Professor Bose on his retirement from the Calcutta University in 1956. As far back as 1937, Rabindranath Tagore dedicated his work Vishwaparichai to Shatyan Bose in recognition of his efforts to popularize science through Bengali. The Bangya Bigyan Parishad was founded by Professor Bose in 1948. So he endeavored ceaselessly to impart scientific knowledge through the regional language of Bengal. This was very dear to his heart. in 1958 came the supreme honor to Professor Bose of a national professorship. Bose emphasized that physics should no longer be restricted to universities and research institutes. And so, Professor Bose, in association with Dr. Shamadash Chatterjee, launched the experiment for the extraction of helium gas from the thermal spring at Bakreshwar in West Bengal. He 
helium gas is very rare, with many uses in modern technology. Today, the Bose-Einstein condensation phenomenon is being applied to extract this rare gas in India. also deeply human. He is equally at home with prominent people as with his friends who may not be so well known. Happy both in company and in solitude. Humble in his humility. Bose never did strive for fame. at the break of dawn on the 4th of February, 1974. In existence, death is an episode. Great minds break the bonds of earthly desires and continue to pass on their findings in Chetra Gyan, matter knowing. Professor Bose has left a legacy to the scientific world in those particles known as bosons, which obey the Bose statistics. With the passing away of Professor Shachendranath Bose, an era comes to an end. A great physicist he certainly was, yet he was a complete human, gentle beyond words, warm-hearted towards friends. He was unassuming and unpretentious and gave no indication of his scholarly achievements. A liberated mind is well aware that no man is an island complete unto himself.